What you're listening to right now is audio that is recorded in 24-bit with my levels set extremely low and then I am boosting those in post. And now this is what the audio sounds like when I'm recording 16-bit with my preamp level set the exact same and the exact same boost in post. Greetings Earthlings and welcome back to Podcastage. This is a video that I wanted to make to answer a couple of questions that I have. Can you actually hear a difference between 16-bit and 24-bit audio? What are the real-world benefits of 24-bit over 16-bit? And do you really need to record with 24-bit bit depth? Part 1. The Theoretical Benefit of 24-bit over 16-bit audio The answer is very simple and it is three words. Increased dynamic range. If you don't know what dynamic range is, it is a number that represents how big of a difference you can record between the loudest sound and the quietest sound. With 16-bit audio, you have a theoretical dynamic range of 96 decibels, and with a bit depth of 24-bit, you have a theoretical limit for your dynamic range of 144 dB. So the dynamic range is 48 decibels greater. The difference between the loudest and the quietest can be 48 decibels more with 24-bit over 16-bit. Part 2. Do 16-bit and 24-bit clip at different levels? I know the majority of you already know this answer, but I did receive a comment that was asserting that 16-bit audio clips at minus 6 dB while 24-bit clips at 0 dB. So I want to put that myth to rest and run a quick test for you. This is a tone generator, and I am going to run this into my Zoom H6. I'm going to set my preamp level, so I am hitting around minus 0.1 dB. I will record that in 16-bit and 24-bit and see if the audio clips at a different level. The conclusion is that 16-bit and 24-bit audio do not clip at different levels. Both bit depths clip at 0 dBFS, and since that is the case, we can determine that since 24-bit audio has an increased dynamic range of 144 dB, which is 48 decibels greater than 16-bit, 24-bit audio should be able to theoretically capture sound sources that are 48 decibels quieter than we can capture with 16-bit. Part 3. Recording a microphone with a bit depth of 16-bit and 24-bit. I have to admit I struggled to find any devices in my studio that recorded at both 16 and 24-bit. The one device I found is the Zoom H6. So to hear this real-world example, I am running the SM7B directly into the H6. I am going to record 16 and 24-bit audio at different preamp levels so we can hear what we find. This is 24-bit audio. The preamp is set at 100%, and here is how it's sounding. Now I have switched over to 16-bit bit depth. My preamp is still set at 100%, and here is how the audio sounds. You really shouldn't hear much of a difference at this level, though. Again, this is 24-bit audio, but now my preamp is set at 50%, and here is how it's sounding. Now the bit depth is set at 16-bit, the preamp is set at around 50%, and here is how this compares. And finally, this is 24-bit audio again, but my preamp is set to 2 on the dial, or approximately 20%, and here is how it's sounding. And the final sound sample is 16-bit audio, with the preamp set at 2, or approximately 20%, and this is what the audio sounds like at this setting. Part 4. Digital Audio Workstation Recordings at 16 and 24-bit Up until now, all of the tests in this video have included analog gear in the microphone and the preamp in the audio interface. It could be argued that the analog equipment is skewing the results, so I want to include a test that eliminates all analog equipment 
from the equation. So I am going to do that exact same level test, but instead of the microphone being the sound source, I will use a software generated sine wave, which should eliminate any kind of analog interference. Part 5. Conclusion Let's start by answering the question, can you hear a difference between 16-bit and 24-bit audio? If you're recording extremely loud sound sources, or if you're recording consistent sound sources and you have your gain level set appropriately, I don't think you can, because if your levels are hitting around minus 18 dB, it's going to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible to hear lossy information around minus 90, minus 96 dB. Maybe I'm a pleb, but I don't think the human ear has that kind of resolution. I want to be abundantly clear, those sounds are incredibly quiet. I have been recording with my gain set at 20% for this entire outro so far. I've been boosting at 58 dB. The sounds are not this quiet, because now I am boosting at 29 dB. With that being said, I think it is undeniable that once we start raising up the quietest portions of the recording, it becomes abundantly clear which recording is 16-bit and which recording is 24-bit because the difference becomes extremely audible when we are boosting the audio by 60 dB. Now let's answer the question, what is the real-world benefit of 24-bit audio over 16-bit audio? With that increased dynamic range, you're able to record quieter sound sources without that information becoming lost, because when we were recording extremely quietly with 16-bit, it sounds as though the audio gets corrupted. With 24-bit, Yes, the sound is a bit noisier because the microphone, the sound source, is amongst the noise floor, but it doesn't have that corrupted sound quality to it, so you're still able to use that audio and even boost it. It will just be a bit noisy. So in my opinion, that is a huge real-world benefit. And the final question that we need to answer is, do you really need to be recording in 24-bit? If you're an online content creator and you know how to set your gain appropriately, I bet that you could be recording in 16-bit and never run into an issue because I am doubting that most online content creators need to recover sounds that are recorded around minus 90 dB. Chances are you're right on your microphone, and if you're hitting around minus 18 dB, you'll never run into an issue. Now, 24-bit audio is a nice to have, and thank goodness it has become pretty standard amongst entry-level audio interfaces. As I mentioned, I had to struggle to find an audio interface that recorded 16 and 24-bit. Most entry-level interfaces nowadays are 24-bit. To find one that is 16-bit, you're looking at the very budget level. I am talking the Behringer UM2, which goes for 30 to 40 bucks, and the M Audio M Track Solo which goes for about 50 bucks. Anything above that is more likely than not going to have 24-bit as the baseline. But how about some applications that might actually benefit from that added dynamic range of 24-bit recording? If you're doing sound design and you are capturing mouse farts, I imagine that might actually be beneficial because you may have some sounds that are down around minus 96 dB that you need to be able to recover. If you recorded that in 16-bit, chances are you won't be able to recover that, but in 24-bit, chances are you will be able to. But also, if you are doing sound design for any kind of professional applications, you're going to be using a sound recorder that has 32-bit floating point recording, I am assuming, and you aren't going to be caring about 24-bit because you have 32-bit floating point. Another application that comes to mind that might benefit from that added dynamic range is orchestral recording, because orchestras go from extremely quiet to extremely loud. 
that means you would have to set your gain a bit lower to accommodate those really loud passages in the piece. And that will mean that the quieter parts are closer to that minus 96 dB. But once we jump to 24 bit, we have that theoretical limit of 144 dB. So those quiet passages are much less likely to get lost in the noise floor and have that kind of corrupted sound to them. And the final thing that I want to say is if you have the option to record in 16-bit or 24-bit, I would recommend going for 24-bit even if you don't think you'll ever need it because it is better safe than sorry and hard drive space is so incredibly cheap now. That is all that I have for you today. I hope the tests helped you understand the difference between 16 and 24-bit audio better. It helped me understand the difference a lot better as well. And that's what this video was, me answering a question that I had for myself. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. There's a video beneath me that you should watch, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you in a week or so. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.